Good evening, everybody. I would like uh, to call upon Professor W. D. Negi, sir, Dr. Sunita Chandra, ma'am, Brigadier K. D. S. Jala, Brigadier S. K. Singh, Bhande Sunita Nand Theroji, to take place on the dais. Good evening. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. A very warm welcome to the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais gathered in this auspicious place of the Central Institute for Higher Tibetan Studies, Sarnath Varanasi. Myself, Dr. Himanshu Pandey, serving this institute as a deputy registrar administration. Now let's begin the paying respect to the, our almighty God with Buddha Vandana in Tibetan and Sanskrit language by the students of this institute. Namostu 
ज्ञानोदिम निखिल सत्वकृतार्थकार प्रज्ञानिदान गुण सागर मेय मंजूश्रिय जिन सुत सत तम नमा मंजूश्रिय जिन सुत सत तम नमा मंजूश्रिय जिन सुत सत तम नमा Buddha says, "It's better to conquer yourself than to win a thousand of battle. Then the victory is yours; it cannot be taken from you." Presently, the institute is running under the able guidance of Professor Wang Chuk Dorje Negi, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of this institute. Professor Negi is a globally renowned scholar of Sanskrit and Tibetan texts of Buddhism. He has been the director of CIBS Leh Ladakh from 2010 to 2015. He has delivered various lectures on Buddhism to various reputed institutions throughout the globe, particularly University of Tasmania, Australia, Smith College, and Hampshire College, USA, etc. He has been visiting faculty at Japan, Chile, Cambodia, Taiwan, Singapore, South Korea, Burma, etc. He has many articles and books in his credit. So let's welcome Professor W. D. Negi, the Vice Chancellor of this institute. for welcome address and introduction of this institute professor negi namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa distinguished officers on the dais and all the visiting officers and my colleagues and my dear students according to indian culture tradition it is believed that atithi devo bhav the means guests are divine beings so with the very spirit on behalf of all member of my institute i would like to extend our heartfelt greeting and very warm welcome to you all to the central institute of higher tibetan studies sarnath i also wanted to let you know that just about two week ago the summer vacation of the institute started and the teaching section of the institute is closed at the moment until the 30th of june Uh, almost all the teaching faculties and students have gone on the summer vacation and only a few them are here gather here in this hall i believe that your visit to our institute is the first on your schedule of visit to prominent place of culture significance during your tour to the ancient city of varanasi which is known as the center of indian arts and culture and you will be witnessing glimpses of the richness of indian culture in the next few day of the your stay in this city the significance of sarnath which is the first of first on your itinerary lie in the suburb of the varanasi is that it is one of the major holy places for buddhist This is the place where the Buddha gave his first teaching after attaining enlightenment in Bodh Gaya, which is today in the Bihar state of India. You will see later during your visit to the archaeological sites, the excavated ruin of the ancient site and the stupa commemorating the first turning of the wheel of Dharma. Starting from that first teaching on the Four Noble Truths. Here in the Sarna, Buddha gave many teachings on the diverse topics to diverse audience. 
just as there are different remedies for the different disease problems, likewise there are various types of emotion inside human being. Among them, the development of karuna or compassion and loving kindness, etc. Positive human qualities are essential for happiness, peace and stability, harmony in the society. Development of nation or country is possible only when there is stability and harmony and peace in the society. On the other hand, there are also destructive emotions such as attachment, anger, jealousy, etc. inside human being because of which situation arises that lead to the various problems like argument, conflict, and even war break out between the family, society, and countries. Therefore, in order to have control over such situation, when mind training and spiritual practice alone is not sufficient, it's become necessary for a country or nation to have various organization and department like defense and so on. In this regard, honestly speaking, I don't think I am in the position to address such an august gathering of the patriotic uh, personage because, as you can see, I am a monk. And my view is that Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which means that the world is one family. The reason behind such a view is that because we are all made up of the same elements, to specify this in Buddhist terminology, we are all the made up of five aggregate, form, sensation, perception, mental violation, and consciousness. And we all desire happiness and not suffering. In terms of Buddhist teaching, the philosophy of Pratitya Samutpat, dependent origination as taught by the Tathagat Buddha, show us that we are all dependent on each other. Existence of the other without the one is not possible. For example, just as the sun, moon, earth, stars, these universes also exist, depending on the each other gravity power. The moment there is some sort of disbalance in these different elements of the universe, our very existence will come to an end. Likewise, the body of our consist of the various parts such as brain, heart, kidney, liver, nerves, oxygen, energy, and so on. And our life is possible because of the composition of these different parts of our body. How will our complete existence be possible without one of them? In this way, going beyond nationalism, we contemplate on the coexistence of the entire universe. On the other hand, you are someone who sacrifice everything for the, your nation, country. So I don't know what I should say to great patriotic like you. But yes, what I definitely want to say is that I will just share a few things with you to give you glimpses of the Indian culture and a brief introduction of this institute. For thousands of years, the country has coexisted with the various religious traditions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Islam, and Christianity. You would be surprised to know that in just one small village of India, you will see about the 50 Hindu families, about 10 Muslim families, about two, three Christian families living together, following their own religious tradition and culture without any fear and discrimination. Mainly, I am speaking this for those who come from abroad. You know, mostly, I am seeing that most of uh, colonels are Indian, so I need not to <laughs> emphasize on this. But anyhow, uh, uh, you wouldn't see something like this in the, any other place in the world. India is indeed a country of diverse culture culture and religious tradition. Everyone is living together harmoniously. That is an extraordinary aspect of Indian culture that I am sure you will be witnessing in this next few days of your stay in the city. Another aspect of greatness of this Indian culture can be seen through India's respective approach toward the people from the neighboring countries for generations 
thousand of refugees from the neighboring countries come to India where they are provide shelter and help despite India's own people facing shortage of basic necessities. This institute is also a result of India's greatness in terms of generosity despite the shortage of basic necessities such as education, health care, which are extremely necessary in the daily life for its own people. For years and years, this country has been kindly taking care of the refugee students along with the students of Indian border areas as Himalayan areas of the neighboring country like Bhutan, Nepal, etc. Accepting them in the spirit of Atiti Devubap. Guests are the gods. When His Holiness Dalai Lama arrived in exile in India on his request, the first Prime Minister of the independent India, Pandit Joharlal Nehru, Nehru established this institute in 1967 along with the preservation of Tibetan culture and knowledge in order to facilitate the people from the Indian Himalayan border area such as Arunachal Pradesh, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, who is in ancient time used to go to Tibet for their traditional Buddhist studies. When this stopped after 1959, this institute was established for the continuation of the traditional Buddhist studies for the student from Indian Himalayan border areas along the student from Tibetan refugee community in exile India. Since the mission of the institute is to preserve Tibetan culture and tradition rooted in the ancient Indian knowledge system and to restore ancient Indian sciences and literature preserved in Tibetan language, but lost in the original. The medium of instruction of teaching, learning in this institute is Tibetan language, along with the traditional Buddhist subject, Soarikpa, Tibetan medicine, astrology, traditional Tibetan thangka painting and hood carving being taught in a modern university framework. Classical and modern languages such as Sanskrit, Pali, Hindi and English, few subjects of the social science like Tibetan and Asian history, economic, political science are also taught here optional subject. The motto of this institute is Buddha Bhaveyam Jagat Hitai. May I become Buddha for the benefit of the world. What this means is that I wish to be enlightened like the Buddha because I wish to benefit others and the way in which benefit to the other is done are on the basis of principle mentioned above such as compassion, love kindness, interdependent origination, harmonious coexistence, acceptance, tolerance and so on. These are indeed the sources of inspiration for the embracing on the path of benefiting others. And we believe in the Buddhist saying that yat aham tat ete, yat ete tat aham, just as I am, others are true. Just as others are, I am true. And we constantly work toward the development of such thought within us. Tibetan culture is primarily based on ancient Indian Nalanda Buddhist culture. Ancient Indian university like Nalanda of the 6th, 7th centuries were a place where great number of people from the all over the Asia would come to study in India. India at that time was very popular in Asia, was known as the Bishop Guru, teacher of the world. In fact, the British poet Sir Edwin Arnold called Buddha the light of Asia around that time. In terms of Tibet scholars from India, such as Acharya Shantarakshita from Vikramshila and Acharya Padmasambhav from Oriana were invited to Tibet in 7th century and they established Buddhism in Tibet at the request of then Tibetan king. After that, all the Buddha's teachings that were originally in the Sanskrit, according to the ancient Indian Nalanda Buddhist tradition, were translated into Tibetan. Today, those translated Buddhist teachings are available in the form of collection known as a Kanjur and Tanjur. The translated teaching of the Buddha himself or the words of the Buddha are known as Kanjur, and it is in the form of 108 poems. <clears throat> the translated commentary by Indian Buddhist master, such as Acharya Nagarjuna from Nagarjuna Hyderabad, Dingnak from Orissa, 
Chandra Kirti from Gujarat, and so on are known as the Tengur, and is in the form of 215 volumes uh, with around 4,567 titles. In terms of the content, there are Buddhist philosophy, literature, medicine, fine arts, astrology, etc., all major and minor Indian sciences. Thus, Tibetan culture is primarily based on the ancient Indian Nalanda Buddhist tradition. In terms of Tibetan language, it's based on Sanskrit and has similar vowels and consonants as in Sanskrit. You can see some of these when you visit our library. Thus, in one way, this institute is for the preservation of Tibetan Buddhist culture, and on the other hand, it is for the revival of Buddhism in India through restoring Buddhist philosophical texts into Sanskrit from their Tibetan translations and translating the Buddhist texts into Hindi from the Tibetan. In terms of English translation of Buddhist teachings, it is being done all over the world. Our institute's focus is mainly on the restoring Buddhist texts into Sanskrit and translating into Hindi from Tibetan, thus reviving preserving and flourishing the lost ancient Indian Nalanda Buddhist tradition in the land of its origin from Tibetan Buddhist tradition as it was preserved in the form of Tibetan Buddhist tradition for thousands of years. With this brief introduction of our institute, I once again welcome you all to this ancient city of Varanasi, which is the most ancient of the all ancient city in the world. The city in which Buddha turned the wheel of Dhamma about 2,556 years ago and showed the path to enlightened 2,000 of being. Apart from that, I am not emphasized here on uh, Buddhism, a sense of Buddhism. Uh, after this uh, session, if someone has query and question, regarding the Buddhist philosophy, uh, regarding the Buddhist culture, I am very much happy to uh, question and answer with this thing. According to Buddhism, compassion uproots pain and suffering. When the compassion we feel for someone is genuine, we experience the light of dharma. So this virtue called daya, karuna, or compassion is filled with grace, wisdom. Now I would like to call upon Dr. Karma Sonam Palmo for her deliberation on orientation to Buddhism. Dr. Karma Sonam Palmo. Most respected um, distinguished uh, officers and um, honorable vice chancellor and registrar ma'am, and uh, Venerable um, Pante Teruji uh, on the dais, and as well as all the visiting uh, officers, um, I extend my warm greetings and would like to say Dashi Delek, which is a form of uh, uh, you know welcome um, in Tibetan language. So Dashi Delek to all of you and welcome to the institute. Um, so, as it has already been mentioned, that uh, because of the summer vacation, um, all I mean, all the faculty members are on uh, vacation. So, I have been given this task of uh, giving a brief sort of introduction on Buddhism, which um, I will try my best by uh, touching upon some salient futures. Uh, uh, with three points. Um, the first that I who, uh, verse or the teaching of the Buddha that I would like to allude to is a very um, essential, uh, important teaching given by the Buddha in the Dhammapada, which says, uh, I will recite first in Tibetan again so that you can have a feel of Tibetan language. Um, so so this means, do not do anything unwholesome. Do all wholesome deeds in abundance. Tame your mind completely, and this is the teaching of the Buddha. So this sort of encapsulates the entire, um, you know, practice and uh, 
um, and uh, engage, uh, gaining knowledge according to the Buddhist philosophy. The first line, do not do anything unwholesome, shows the, the training in morality, you know, uh, which means to not do anything that is unwholesome means uh, any action that you would not, uh, not like to, you know, be done upon you. Do not give anyone any suffering or any action that will make them unhappy. So it's sort of, uh, you know, the whole uh, morality part of the practice of Buddhism is uh, um, shown in this line. And this will lead to further elaborations of Buddhist teachings on uh, the, um, you know, how to avoid uh, not committing unwholesome deeds and how to cultivate wholesome actions in order to, uh, you know, accumulate merit and further engage on the path of uh, training to gain wisdom. The second line, do wholesome deeds in abundance. This shows the, uh, the training in concentration, which is all known uh, as the samadhi. Um, so in this, through this second line, what it shows is that you engage in contemplation of the teachings. You engage in concentration and meditation of the teachings that you, you know, uh, uh, implement upon yourself so that ultimately you gain wisdom, which is shown by the third line, tame your mind completely. So in order to tame our mind completely, of course, we need to be enlightened with the wisdom of the teachings that the Buddha has uh, shown. So, and this is, this is, as, and the fourth line sums up, sort of sums up the whole thing, saying this is the teaching of the Buddha. So in gist, these uh, verse, these four lines, shows the entire three trainings of Buddhism, the training in morality, uh, the training in uh, concentration, and the training in uh, wisdom. Um, so uh, this leads to the second aspect that, that I would like to touch upon uh, is the fundamental uh, uh, the philosophy of Buddhism, which is known as the Pratitya Samutpada or the interdependent origination. Because the wisdom aspect of the training is entirely based on training yourself to come unto this uh, understanding of the true nature of thing, which lies in the uh, understanding of the inter interdependent nature of things. Buddhism now uh, believes that everything is interconnected. It's a web of interconnectedness, and there is nothing that is absolutely permanent, or um, you know, that sort of is in the form of a uh, absolute nature. Um, and this is, you know, the uh, first teaching about the Pratitya Samutpada is famously um, uh, depicted in an interaction between two earlier, you know, the uh, sort of first two disciples of the Buddha named uh, ascetic Asaji and Shariputra. So Shariputra later became, uh, you know, uh, one of the two uh, prominent disciples of the Buddha before Shariputra became uh, Buddha's follower, he actually met another follower of the Buddha uh, and asked him, uh, that ascetic, whose name was Asaji, saying, what does your teacher teach? You know, what is the uh, message of your teacher? And that of a, a Asaji, uh, ascetic, he said, I'm just a beginner. I'm not able to give you the entire, you know, I've just sort of started learning from him. And then Shariputra requested him or, or persuaded him, saying, just give me the uh, summary, you know, that would be enough for me. And then he went on saying, uh, you know, the famous line that we recite in our prayers every day. So, which is, means all phenomena that originate from causes. The Tathagata has taught these causes. And also that which puts a stop to these causes. These two has been taught by the great Shramana. So that time, he was, the Buddha was known as the great Shamana, the great ascetic. So Buddha has, um, you know, uh, 
the extraordinary teaching or the very important aspect of Buddha's teaching was the revelation of this interdependent nature of the entire uh, universe, uh, uh, if you would like to say, you know. And then he has already also, um, you know, not just said that all these phenomena are originated through cause or causally conditioned. He has also shown us the path uh, that you know, that can come to an end. We can put an end to all these causally conditioned phenomena, you know. And so he, Buddha, actually, so through the uh, teaching of the philosophy interdependent origination, has given um, us the path or to understand our, uh, you know, how we have come into being in this uh, samsara. We believe, Buddhism believed that we have been uh, born in this samsara uh, beginningless time. So there is, there is no point where we can sort of point out the beginning. But there is, a, uh, you know, if we embark on, if we try, there is an end that we can put to the uh, end, put an end to this life of suffering, you know. And then this is not just out of sort of, you know, um, uh, like uh, for this, but in order to understand how we have come about this, how diverse, you know, what are the different, you know, uh, we have all sort of, you know, um, are different in our situations, in our appearances, in our everyday life. So these are all causally, you know, conditioned uh, by uh, our actions, which is known as karma. And so this law of causality depicted through the philosophy of Pratitya Samutpada, an interdependent origination, is fundamental to uh, understanding the, the, the essence of Buddhism. So that is why, since Buddhism does not believe in anything that is there in its absolute nature, there is nothing there to be destroyed. But there is only thing that can be dispelled dispelled by the wisdom of uh, uh, you know, knowing this true nature of reality in the form of interdependent origination or emptiness, another name. So interdependent origination itself is the, 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 the foundation of, or the synonym of the teaching on emptiness. Teaching on emptiness means things are empty of inherent existence. They are absolutely not there as we sort of ignorantly believe. Things are interdependently uh, um, sort of connected. And that is why, you know, we have to know this uh, fundamental nature of things coming into being. And that's uh, the way to uh, embark on the Buddhist practice. So, um, we, many of you have, uh, uh, you may have probably seen many different uh, Buddhist traditions like Theravada or Mahayana or Tibetan or Ch uh, Chinese or whatever, or regardless of the differences of the Buddhist practitioners in their appearances, in their attire and so on, uh, the, 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 f you know, the foundational boundary that uh, uh, sort of you, uh, they all unanimously abide by are the uh, teachings or the four or uh, seals or four boundaries that is the uh, crux of the Buddhist philosophy. And that is all conditioned phenomena are impermanent. So as long as you are Buddhist, you are, have to abide by this uh, uh, belief that all conditioned phenomena are impermanent. There is, you know, as, as soon as something is conditioned, if you believe something is unconditioned, that's a totally different story. But if you believe that everything is conditioned, then they are uh, bound by uh, uh, impermanence nature. And everything that is impure is of the nature of suffering. So this means impure not in the sense of physical filthiness or anything like that. Impure in the sense of destructive emotions, like um, Soros alluded to, the, you know, rag, dwesh, etc. The, you know, negative in emotions that we, um, you know, experience every day in our life. So everything, whatever we do, that is sort of tainted, that is sort of contaminated by these sort of impure thoughts and negative emotions, they are absolutely in the nature of suffering. Although it may give you a sense of, you know, no, no, not being like suffering, 
like maybe for a momentary uh, sense of happiness by causing some suffering to somebody, but it's absolutely in the nature of suffering in the end. Uh, likewise, the third line is all phenomena are empty and lack of self. So this again goes, takes us back to the uh, philosophy of the interdependent nature of everything. Nothing existing on its own or in, in, inherently without depending on other things. And that is why we, you know, Buddhism, another aspect of Buddhism's uh, philosophical belief is of uh, lack of self or anatma. That is, we don't believe in an atma that is believed in another, other sanatana dharms and all. We believe that, of course, there is a basis for the uh, law of causality to take place. But there isn't something that uh, a self that is in that. It's an absolute inherent nature that can, uh, you know, sort of be the basis of the uh, karmic actions that we do in our life. But it's actually, we believe it's a stream of consciousness, continuity of the consciousness, that is sort of uh, the, the, uh, the basis of our, you know, our actions and the results that we um, experience uh, because of our karmic actions. And for, uh, the, the last line is this nirvana, uh, which is, means beyond suffering or is the peace. So this means there is, you know, there is nothing that is permanent in this world. There is uh, all that is impure or all that is sort of tainted by our negative in, uh, uh, emotions and on, uh, actions and all are all first in the nature of suffering, no matter what, uh, regardless of its momentary pleasure that it may give you. And ultimately everything is interconnected and therefore there is no absolutely uh, existential uh, property that, uh, you know, that's there as a, as a basis of our uh, karmic actions, but it's actually rather a continuity of our stream of consciousness that transfer, uh, sort of transmigrates from one life to the other. And ultimately, when you, you know, there is, you, you know, in order to um, sort of uh, go beyond this suffering forever, you know, beyond this suffering forever, we need to come to the understanding of this true nature of uh, the things, the reality of things, the, of emptiness and interdependent origination. And that is the, the goal of the Buddhist, uh, Buddhist practice. And that is whether you call it nirvana or whether you call it Buddhahood, that is the goal of the Buddhist practice. Ultimately, you break this chain of cyclic existence, which has been caused by your own negative actions and um, um, you know, um, emotions. And so hence, you know, um, if you go beyond all these, uh, all these teachings, uh, ultimately in the uh, Mahayana tradition especially, there's this doctrine of Buddha nature, which is, uh, which believes that not just human beings, all sentient beings have this potential to become Buddha. It means everybody can eventually, if they try, embark on the spiritual path of, uh, that Buddha has shown by going through the trainings, three trainings of morality, uh, concentration and wisdom and coming to the understanding of the reality of the things and become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. So this is slightly difference between the Theravada and the minor tradition. Theravada uh, Buddhism uh, is the Buddhism, Buddhist tradition that you uh, see being practiced in Southeast Asian countries and Mahayana Buddhist tradition is the uh, tradition that you witness uh, see being practiced in uh, in Tibet, in uh, China, and then in Korea and Japan, etc. And so, because of this, uh, you know, uh, belief in the universal uh, nature of uh, the potential to become Buddha in all sentient beings, there is no discrimination according to Buddhist teachings. No gender discrimination, no caste discrimination, no discrimination between the species. Everybody has the equal potential to practice uh, Buddhism, uh, the teachings that Buddha has shown, and ultimately attain Buddhahood. So, um, 
And then if we speak um, more about uh, the Mahayana, there is also this very uh, fundamental uh, Buddhist um, ideal of bodhisattva practices that that is emphasized in the Mayana Buddhist tradition. So this is um, um, bodhisattvas are those beings who who sort of engage in the path and they decide to come back again and again in the world so that they can show and help other sentient beings and lead them to the, uh, the path to ultimate enlightenment. So the difference is we as normal human beings, we come back again and again to this world out of our own karmic actions and negative emotions. While the bodhisattvas are those who come back to this uh, samsara knowingly. They have chose to come back to the show the path of the, uh, the teachings of the Buddha to the sentient beings. So these are some of the, I think I've run out of time. <laughs> so these are some of the salient features uh, that I just tried to touch upon um, in this uh, brief uh, sort of sharing my uh, thing with you. So I thank you so much uh, for listening. And uh, I, if you have any questions, I guess you can later interact with the Honorable Vice Chancellor, who is not only a great administrator, but a great philosopher. So he will be having more answers to all your questions later. Thank you. Distractions are everywhere. So to cope up with these distractions, concentration of mental thoughts is mandatory. And this may be achieved by practicing meditation. Meditation nourishes the mind in the same way the food nourishes the body. So now I would like to call upon Dr. Ramesh Chandnegi for introduction of Vipassana meditation. Dr. Ramesh Chandnegi ji. Namo tasya bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasya. Firstly, I sorry for the unable to saying in English. I want to uh, talk in Hindi. And uh, uh, Karma Sunam Palmo may be translated later. To Avi Manchester Vidwat Vrind. Sena ke adhikari vrind aur uh, is uh, hall mein bete hamare yahan ke sabhi colleagues, chhatr aur uh, vishesh kar hamare vajra vidya sastan chaye kempu ji to mujhe uh, vipashna ke baare mein bolna hai abhi tak jo aap logon ne suna to wo tha to vipashna hi vipashna ka seedha seedha arth hai विपसना जो है जो तथागत सम्यक संबुद्ध ने जिन बातों को कहा जो तीन प्रकार के जो शिक्षाएं अविकर्म सनम पलमों ने कहीं शील समाधि और प्रज्ञा शील समाधि और प्रज्ञा को एक ही आसन पर बैठकर जिसका प्रैक्टिस होता है उसी को हम लोग विपसना कहते हैं तो उस विपसना के लिए हम लोग आ, क्या करना चाहिए और कैसे करना चाहिए तो इसके जो विधि है बहुत ज़्यादा हैं खास करके माहयान में देखें तो जो है बहुत ज़्यादा है तो लेकिन फिर भी जो आजकल जो विश्व में प्रसिद्ध विपसना का जो हमारे आचार्य एस एन गोयंका के द्वारा प्रसारित हो रहा है तो मैं उसके आधार पर ही थोड़ा सा कहना चाहूँगा कि उसमें जो है हम लोग जैसे विपसना है तो विपसना प्रज्ञा को ही कहते हैं विपसना जो है हम लोगों की बुद्धि है और सम्यक बुद्धि है जैसे एक तो सामान्य बुद्धि है उसमें आपके जो लौकिक जो बुद्धि है उसको भी जोड़ते हैं लेकिन विपसना जो है सम्यक बुद्धि सम्यक प्रज्ञा को हम लोग जो विपसना कह रहे हैं और वो सम्यक प्रज्ञा जो है कैसे पैदा होता है उसको पैदा करने का जो एक आ, जो विधि है उसमें जो है दो चरण हैं पहले चरण को हम लोग शमत कहते हैं जो इस परंपरा में हम लोग आनापान के द्वारा सिद्ध करते हैं वृत्त के द्वारा सांस का आना और जाना उस पर हम लोग कॉन्सेंट्रेट करते हैं तो वो समाधि की प्राप्ति होती है जैसे अभी 
कर्मासनम पलमो ने जो कहा था कि पहले शील का पालन करना है शील पालन करने के बाद जो है हम लोगों को कॉन्सेंट्रेशन जो समाधि है उसमें होना है तो समाधि के लिए जो है निश्चित रूप से ये सांस का सहारा हम लोग लेते हैं और सांस के सहारे सांस के द्वारा हम लोग जो है फिर प्रज्ञा की उत्पत्ति करते हैं फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल he uh, the venerable um, professor negi would like to offer his greetings and welcome to all the visiting officers and the visiting um, uh, venerables from the surrounding uh, temples of sarnath and all the um, um, dignitaries on the dais as well as all the staffs and students gathered in this hall uh, he will be speaking in hindi and uh, it will, uh, i'm trying to uh, translate the gist of the teaching that he has given so vipassana means the training of the three trainings uh, of morality uh, concentration and wisdom in practical so vipassana is not just uh, uh, learning them through theoretically or studying them but it's actually to put uh, the practices of these three trainings into practice by sitting on meditation and uh, there are many uh, ways of practicing vipassana especially if you go through the mahayana teachings uh, 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 about the vipassana teachings then it's even more um, extensive uh, here uh, he would like to just uh give uh you know the summary of those teachings and um, so vipassana ultimately means pragya pragya or wisdom and in terms of pragya or wisdom of course there laukik worldly wisdom and the transcendental wisdom so here when you say vipassana it means the transcendental wisdom that you gain by sitting and practicing vipassana uh, 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 asana iske liye jaise humne kaha ki pehla charan jo hai hum log shamat kehte hain ya usko jo hai shamat ko yahan par theravat mein hum log anapan ke dwara sit karte hain anapan ka arth hai ki hum log jo saans jaise sadhana ke liye baithenge to hum log jo hai uska thoda sa kyunki yahan par zyada samay nahi hai bahut kam samay hai तो उसको थोड़ा सा आप लोग अगर सुन लेंगे तो भविष्य में अगर सही ढंग से दस दिवसीय बैठेंगे तो उसमें समझ में आ जाएगा तो आपके रीढ़ की हड्डी हम लोग साधना करते समय सीधी रहेगी और जैसे हम लोग नीचे पालथी मारकर बैठना है अभी तो कुर्सी पर हैं कुर्सी पर बैठे रहें और जब वास्तव में साधना करेंगे तो हम लोग आँख भी बंद करेंगे मुँह भी बंद करेंगे साँस जो है हम लोगों को नाक से लेना है नाकते नाक से आते जाते सांस पर ही हम लोगों को पूरा कंसंट्रेशन करना है तो वो जो है क्योंकि कई बार ये जो नए लोग हैं वो पजल होते हैं कि भाई सांस तो आते जाते रहता है इससे क्या होता है लेकिन क्योंकि हम लोगों का सांस के साथ जो है हमारे मन का बहुत ज़्यादा संबंध है मतलब कि ऐसा कहिए कि मन जो है सांस के आधार पर ही चलता है जैसे एक लंगड़े आदमी को घोड़े पर बिठा दें तो वो घोड़ा जहाँ जहाँ जाएगा लंगड़ा आदि में जाएगा तो ऐसे हमारा जो मन है वो भी सांस के सहारे चलता है तो इसलिए धीरे धीरे समझ में आएगा लेकिन ये है कि ये बहुत ही इफेक्टिव है अगर आप इसको जो है हर रोज 10-15 मिनट सुबह शाम करना शुरू कर देंगे केवल ब्रीदिंग ब्रीदिंग जो आपका आनापान है तो उससे जो है आपके मन शुद्ध होना शुरू हो जाता है हम लोग कहते हैं कि भाई जैसे आपका कपड़ा अशुद्ध हो जाता है गंदा हो जाता है हम लोग दो लेते हैं शरीर गंदा हो जाता है तो हम लोग नहा लेते हैं लेकिन मन गंदा होता है तो क्या करते हैं वैसे तो सारे पुण्य जो अच्छे काम हैं उससे मन की शुद्धि होती है लेकिन वो आपके जड़ों तक साफ नहीं कर सकता जड़ों तक साफ करने के लिए सांस तक जाना ही पड़ेगा और ये सांस को देखते देखते आप निश्चित रूप से धीरे धीरे जो है अपने मन की शुद्धि करना शुरू करेंगे और मन की शुद्धि करने से क्या होता है कि आपके शारीरिक रोग खत्म हो जाते हैं आपका जो लेजीनेस है वो खत्म हो जाता है आपके शरीर में पुराने रोग होंगे वो भी खत्म हो जाता है और आप जो है पॉजिटिव 
जो आपका सकारात्मक विचार है वो ज़्यादा बढ़ने शुरू होंगे हम लोगों का दुख जो भगवान बुद्ध ने कहा कि भाई दुख है तो दुख तो नकारात्मक विचारों का है ना सकारात्मक विचारों का नहीं है अगर आप सकारात्मक विचार को बढ़ावा देंगे तो निश्चित रूप से आप जो है दुख से मुक्त होते हैं तो इसीलिए बुद्ध ने कहा कि पहले दुख आर्य सत्य है दुख आर्य सत्य किसके कारण है नकारात्मक विचार के कारण उसको हम लोग समुदाय कह रहे हैं और जब समुदाय को हम लोग सांस के सारे अपने अंडर में करेंगे तो वो निरोध की प्राप्ति होती है निरोध बने आपका जो दुख है वो समाप्त होना शुरू होता है um, uh, techniques and ways of practicing vipassana the one that will be discussed here is the uh, one that uh, starts with shamatha practice shamatha practice basically means the uh, practice of watching your breath you constantly watch uh, your breath that is uh, that is being inhaled and exhaled um, uh, from moment to moment and although we are now here in the uh, uh, position of sitting on chairs when we actually do this uh, in the traditional manner we sit cross legged uh, with closed eyes closed mouth and then constantly watch our breath going from you know passing through our nostrils so sometimes people wonder what is so big thing about watching uh, breath that's there all the time but it's actually not as simple as we think that it's just a mere breath it's actually the whole thing you know if you uh, sort of engage and watch this breath constantly you will be able to uh, um, sort of tranquil you know calm your mind with negative impu uh, uh, impurities and also it will help in uh, remedying some of the physical ailments uh, that has been um, prob uh, giving problem to you all in all it generates positive energy within you by sitting and practicing uh, vipassana ultimately leading of course to the uh, you know, uh, the acquiring of the uh, wisdom yes. तो ये जो है जैसे सांस के सारे हम लोग सांस पर मन एकाग्र करना शुरू करते हैं तो वो अपने आप हमारे मन को शुद्ध करना शुरू कर देता है हमारे पुराने जो संस्कार हैं गलत के प्रति गलत विचारों के प्रति कुसंस्कारों के प्रति वो धीरे धीरे जो है वो सांस जो है अपने आप उसको शुद्ध करना शुरू करता है लेकिन उसको जो है थोड़ा सा जब तक हम लोग अपने संवेदनाओं के साथ नहीं जोड़ेंगे क्योंकि सांस जब लोग हम जैसे बैठे हैं सांस लेना शुरू करते हैं तो आपके आज शरीर भी है ना हम लोगों का दुख के हम लोग दो प्रकार मानते हैं एक तो मानसिक सुख है दुख है एक शारीरिक दुख है तो शारीरिक दुख जो है जब हम लोग बैठते हैं तो पांव दर्द करना शुरू करता है फिर आपका जो है कहीं ईचिंग सेंसेशन हो रही है कहीं परेशानी हो रही है बाहर से आवाज़ आ रही है उन सब के प्रति जब लोग हम लोग बैठते हैं साधना में तो आप जो है हमारे शरीर में जितने भी जो वेदनाएं संवेदनाएं हो रही हैं उसके प्रति आपको जो है बिल्कुल रिएक्ट नहीं करना है और वो रिएक्ट नहीं करेंगे तो निश्चित रूप से वो अपने आप जो है फिर क्या करता है कि आपके जितने भी जो पुराने जो गलत संस्कार हैं वो अपने आप रिड्यूस होना शुरू करता है तो इस विपक्षना साधना में बहुत ही सिंपल साधना है सांस को देखना है संवेदना को देखना है संवेदना को आप इक्वनमिक माइंड से देखेंगे उसको जो उपेक्षाचित कहते हैं समताचित कहते हैं उससे देखेंगे तो निश्चित रूप से आपका जो है पूरा जो जिसको हम लोग कहते हैं ना कि जो प्रज्ञा है हम लोगों का दुख जैसे मैंने कहा नहीं जानने का दुख है और गलत जानने का दुख है वो दोनों जो है धीरे धीरे अपने आप समाप्त होना शुरू करता है होता है लेकिन उसके लिए ये ज़रूरी है कि उसका जो हम लोग साधना करते हैं उसको जो है हम लोग निरंतर साधना में लगे रहें निरंतर का मतलब कम से कम दिन में सुबह शाम तो करना ही चाहिए अभी नए हैं तो दस पंद्रह मिनट से शुरू करें और धीरे धीरे उसको जो है बीस मिनट 
तीस मिनट चालीस मिनट ऐसा करते करते दो चार महीने में उसको एक घंटे तक ले जाएं और फिर आपको बहुत उसमें आगे बढ़ना है तो फिर टेन डेज कोर्सेस हैं उसमें जाना चाहिए तो ये जो है भगवान बुद्ध के द्वारा जो विपसना साधना है इसमें भगवान बुद्ध के सारे जो भगवान बुद्ध ने पैंतालीस वर्ष वर्षों तक जो धर्म दिए उसका ये सार है और ये जो है सारे जो विषयों के सारे लोग हैं उन लोगों को करना चाहिए क्योंकि सुख हम लोगों को चाहिए सबके लिए और दुख हम लोगों को नहीं चाहिए और सुख और दुख का जो वास्तविक जो निराकरण है जड़ से उखाड़ना है वो विपक्षना के द्वारा ही होता है और कोई साधना और कोई विधि जो है दूसरा विधि संपूर्णतः है जो हमारे दुखों को जो है जड़ से उखाड़ नहीं सकता इसलिए हम लोगों को ये बहुत ही सिंपल साधना है आपको सांस को देखना है और आपके संवेदना के प्रति आप जो है उसको जो है समता चित्त से देखना है संवेदना को समता चित्त से देखना है संवेदना के प्रति रिएक्ट नहीं करना है तो ये दोनों जो है विपक्षना के मुख्य अंश हैं अगर इसको देखना सीखेंगे तो आपको जो है जीवन का सारा जो मूल्य है या जिसके लिए आप पैदा हुए हैं हम लोग केवल मनुष्य पैदा होकर केवल हम लोग पादा और धन के प्रति आसक्त रहते हुए केवल रोते हुए चले जाएं तो ये हम लोगों का मनुष्य का हम हम लोगों का जो मेन उद्देश्य है उसकी पूर्ति नहीं होती है तो हम लोगों के मनुष्य की पूर्ति जिसको हमने कहा कि पुरुषार्थ की सिद्धि अंतिम जो हम लोगों का मनुष्य होने के नाते हम लोगों का जो है सबसे ज़्यादा विजडम हम लोग पैदा कर सकते हैं हम लोग बुद्ध बन सकते हैं या अलमाइटी जो अंतिम है उसको प्राप्त कर सकते हैं सारे दुखों से मुक्त हो सकते हैं कभी कभी क्या होता है कि हम लोग कहते हैं कि निर्वाण प्राप्त करना है तो लोग मरने को निर्वाण समझते हैं मरने को निर्वाण नहीं है निर्वाण का अर्थ है आप दुख से मुक्त हो जाना जितने जितने आप दुख से मुक्त होते हैं उतने आप जो है अलमाइटी या बुद्ध की तरफ या भगवान की तरफ जा रहे हैं तो ये हम लोगों को बहुत ही संक्षेप में मैंने आपको सांस को देखना और फिर संवेदना को देखना दोनों को समता चित्त से देखना अगर आप सांस पर बिल्कुल कॉन्सेंट करते हैं करते हैं तो वो समता अपने आप आता है लेकिन कहीं संवेदना जो आपको ज़्यादा परेशानी कर रही है तो उससे में थोड़ा ध्यान देना चाहिए कि आज तक हम लोग जो है केवल संवेदनाओं के प्रति जो है प्रतिक्रिया करते रहे अब मुझे नहीं करना है चाहे वो पाँच मिनट के लिए हो चाहे दस मिनट के लिए हो चाहे बीस मिनट के लिए हो तो ये लगातार करने से वास्तव में हम लोगों का जो है कल्याण होता है और यही नहीं जो अभी पूरे विश्व में इसके जो आचार्य गोयंका जी का सेंटर चलता है उसमें जो लोग डॉक्टर जिस रोग को ठीक नहीं कर सकता है तो वो साधन ये विपक्षना साधना करके ठीक हो रहे हैं और जिनका माइंड डिस्टर्ब है वो लोग ठीक हो रहे हैं जो ड्रग एडिक्स हैं वो ठीक हो रहे हैं तो वो केवल एक दो का नहीं बहुतों का ठीक हो रहा है और पूरे विश्व में हज़ारों लोग इस साधना में लगे हैं तो इसको हम लोगों को उसमें क्या करते हैं लोग ये दो ही चीज़ें करते हैं सांस देखते हैं संवेदना देखते हैं um so basically uh vipassana practice is uh, said earlier to watch your breath and watch your sensations so when you watch your sensations you simply watch it without reacting to it whatever sensations you feel in your body you have to simply watch it and don't react it make sure that it is not reacted upon and then this will Uh, gradually lead you to the removal of all the negative sanskars or the negative emotions that has been there uh, you know in as a habit of yours from uh, beginningless time uh, in this life as well as previous lives and then uh, this watching of your breath and sensation also has to be done through um, equanimity without any bias without any liking on liking of certain sensations or some or or the or the breath you simply watch it without any uh, discrimination of uh, liking uh, or dislike etc simply watch it uh, without reacting to it and this will gradually lead you to the removal of the uh, the, the the knowledge that you have ignorantly uh, garnered or the 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 wrong knowledge that incorrect knowledge of the reality of the things that you have so far gained so this will ultimately lead you to the path of being enlightened 
of understanding the true nature. And I suggest you to do this uh, initially uh, for short periods, like 15, 10, 15 minutes in the mornings and evenings, and gradually expand it to an hour or two every day. And then if you become familiar and you would like to, then you can also do a 10 days Vipassana course that is uh, run uh, under the organization of Acharya uh, Goenkaji all over the world. Um, so this Vipassana, it, it is indeed the, 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 uh, the gist of the Buddha's teachings, um, in the entire Buddha's teachings, and this will uh, lead you to, the, uh, uh, to ultimate happiness and uh, removal or elimination of the suffering, suffering momentarily as well as uprooting the suffering from the core. And this will also leave you, uh, you know, lead you towards the cultivation of the human values and then make your life meaningful. It's not like you, uh, because we have gained this precious human being, we have the potential to make it meaningful. So uh, not just leaving this world with a name or position or something like that, but to make it more meaningful. So when you leave it or when you uh, uh, leave this world, you have done something meaningful, at least embarked upon the path to understand the reality. And then nirvana is, of course, uh, the ultimate liberation from the suffering. Some people uh, mistakenly think nirvana is simply death, but it is not. It is something that is beyond death, beyond suffering. And so, um, and then this sort of uh, practices that uh, uh, Vipassana practice uh, technique that is especially uh, in this tradition of Acharya Goenkaji is very popular all over the world in, in terms of many people experiencing uh, benefit from it. Like there were many cases of people suffering from terminal illnesses that cannot be cured by uh, medical practitioners, has been cured by this practice. There has been many people who go through uh, drug addictions or depressions, etc., mental problems, they have been cured by these uh, Vipassana techniques. So this is something that I would suggest you to do it once, uh, if you can do. And me, me, because here are all the officers, the Sena's officers, and the people who are not will become slowly, slowly. So I want to say this for them that we have seen that because. अब हम लोग में जो है 65 इयर्स का मैं हो गया हूँ, लेकिन हमने देखा है जो बड़े-बड़े अधिकारी हैं, बड़े पोस्टों पर बैठे हैं, नेता हैं, काम बहुत अच्छा नहीं कर सकते क्यों? क्योंकि उनका जो है डिसीजन लेने की क्षमता नहीं है, क्षमता क्यों नहीं है? वो अच्छे और बुरे को जो है तुरंत समझते नहीं है। तो यहां पर, तो डिसीजन लेने के लिए आवश्यक है कि आपका माइंड फ्रेश रहे हर समय जो है आप नेगेटिव इमोशन से दूर रहें आपका जो है कोई भी गलत जो हम लोग लोग जो गलत तरीके के लोग हैं वो मिले भी तो उसको हम लोग एक्सेप्ट नहीं करके उसको अब हम लोग जो है पॉजिटिव में ही हम लोग बदलें तो कई बार हम कहते हैं कि विपक्षना और कुछ नहीं है पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग है तो उसके लिए बहुत अच्छा है कि आप लोग भविष्य में इसमें कुछ लोग किए भी हो सकते हैं क्योंकि मैं लोग इन सब लोगों को जानता नहीं हूं अगर कुछ लोग किए हैं तो बहुत अच्छा है वो आगे और बढ़े और जो लोग नहीं किए हैं उनको एक टेंडेंस को जरूर बैठना चाहिए और विपक्षना के बारे में जानने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए क्योंकि ये आपके डिसीजन लेने की क्षमता को बढ़ाता है तो डिसीजन लेने की क्षमता को बढ़ने का मतलब है आप अपने समाज और जहां जिस इंस्टीट्यूशन में बैठे हैं उसको तरक्की की ओर ले जाना और जो तरक्की की ओर नहीं ले जाने का जो मुख्य कारण है वो हम लोगों के अंदर जो नेगेटिव इमोशंस आते रहते हैं जो नकारात्मक विचार आते हैं वही है और विपक्षना उन नकारात्मक विचारों को साफ करने का एक विधि है और कुछ है नहीं तो उसका जो है एक तो सांस के सारे एक आपके जो संवेदना है उसके सारे आगे बढ़ता है क्योंकि समय बहुत कम है कहा गया कि वे 10 मिनट में बोलना है और अनुवाद के लिए 10 मिनट हम के लिए 10 मिनट दो 10 मिनट में सारा चीजें कहना बहुत संभव नहीं है लेकिन मैंने जितना हो सका तो मैं यही आपसे गुजारिश करता हूं कि आप लोग जो है निश्चित रूप से 
कभी समय मिले तो दस दिन का निकल साधना में निकल जाइए केवल समय निकालना है वो भी पश्चिना साधना सारी जगह फ्री होता है आपको फ्री में दस दिन बैठना है और आप इंटरनेट पर जो है उसका वो चयन कर सकते हैं विश्व के किसी भी कोने में करना चाहें तो 100 शायद उनका 220-30 से ज़्यादा सेंटर हैं भारत में बहुत ज़्यादा हैं तो इसको ज़रूर करिएगा तो निश्चित रूप से आप फिर अपने जहाँ भी आप रहते हों जिस देश के भी हों जिस समाज में रहते हों तो उसके लिए फ्रूटफुल आपका जो एक कर्तव्य है वो आप करेंगे तो उससे हमारा पुरुषार्थ की सिद्धि होगी हम लोग समाज को कुछ दे पाएंगे ऐसा नहीं कि हम केवल समाज का लेके बैठ गए तो बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद um i i see that all of you are officers of high ranking and then what it means to be officers of high ranking is that you have to constantly be making decisions and um, so if you when somebody's mind is not calm and disturbed by negative emotions then one cannot uh, make a proper decision one cannot distinguish between a uh, proper judgment of, uh, of correct decision or incorrect decision and so since your officers of you know having authority to decide upon important uh, missions and uh, uh, actions uh, i would suggest you uh, to uh, please try to do this practice at least once some of you may have already done it once those of you who have already done may try to continue doing it again some of you uh, who may not have yet known about this or heard about this may try to explore about this because the centers are all over the world many centers in india as well as abroad and um, so vipassana is simply put it's positive thinking so it is nothing more than it's positive thinking and then um, it will definitely uh, calm your mind and uh, make you uh, equipped uh, to make uh, uh good decisions take proper decisions and this will lead you to uh, give something or uh, uh, benefit the society because you are all engaged in this um, um um position of making decisions that will have uh, results uh, upon the society um so that is why uh, it it's uh, very important uh, to at least try to do this uh, 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 course once and as i said it is simply a, uh, not a very sophisticated thing it's simply watching your uh, sensi uh, sensations and breath um, uh, inhaling and exhaling of your breath uh, you know uh, economically and this is a very far reaching impact although it sounds simple it has a huge impact of changing your um, outlook changing or you know or developing your decision making power and the the outlook that you have towards uh, the actions that you will be engaging in so this is something very important that i would like you to uh, at least explore once in your life thank you thank you good governance is required to flourish the institute good governance depend upon the ability to take the responsibility by the administrator and our institute is fortunate enough to have an administrator like dr sunicha chandra madam before joining this institute madam chandra served banaras hindu university in the capacity of the joint registrar and as a registrar at baba sahab bhimrao ambedkar university lucknow she has been the member of the various statutory and bodies and uh, committees of the government of india her credo in life is speak your truth for there lies your essence with these word i would like to call upon dr sunita chandra the registrar of this institute to deliver his lecture on the organizational structure and contribution of chits thank you 
Thank you, Dr. Pandey. You have given me a very difficult task in two senses. First challenge is we are running out of the scheduled time that was given to us, two hours. Uh, and second is the whole house right now is in a certain mental frame uh, where we have talked so much of uh, spirituality and from Honorable Vice Chancellor uh, apprising us of the philosophy of Buddhism to Vipassana to uh, the Buddhism, uh, I am going to talk material things to this house. So this is going to be a difficult task. But yes, thank you for calling me here. A very good afternoon, all of you. Now it is evening, I think. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, and most respected personnel from armed forces, dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, students, faculties, and friends. My heartiest welcome in this auspicious and uh, day on uh, the Pius Institute of Tibetan Studies. Uh, I would briefly tell about, uh, because we are already short of time, so I would not want to go into the details, but definitely when you have come to our institute, I would want everybody to know about this institute as a take-home package uh, to all of you at when you go back. I consider this to be a precious moment of my life too, as we have got the fortune, fortune uh, and we are fortunate enough to be present amongst the dignitaries who have brought honor to their countries and their nations and with their courage, braveness, and they are heroes of their own countries in sense. So I welcome you all from abroad and our country. <laughs> Sacrificing for life for nation, wishing every moment to die for the country, to be a martyr is no less than the lives of saint. And so we bow down to all of you. I feel proud to be with you. The Institute has been working towards compiling, restoring, and translating the rare, rare text for the Indian readers. As Honorable Vice Chancellor has already told about it, but I would just say two lines of it so that it gets connected, that the genesis of this institute can be traced back to 1967, when our Prime Minister Pranjit Jawaharlal Nehru and His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, thought of the creation of this institution to teach primarily the young Tibetan students in exile and later students of similar cultures were also amalgated in this institution. We teach or rather excel in the field of Tibetology, Buddhology and Himalayan studies. We provide excellent platform for Indic, Tibetan and Western philosophies to communicate and interact and debate. Uh, I don't want to talk about the history, but I'll just tell the present where we are and how we are contributing to this society. So the institute is a beautiful mix of tradition, culture and modernity, where a generation of students from Himalayan region, Tibet and various inter international regions like Russia, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Myanmar, etc. have got education, which is acclaimed across the globe, especially in the area of Buddhism and Tibetology. The lost legacy of the ancient Nalanda Takshashila and Vikram Shila tradition is kept alive here. They, it would not be an exaggeration if I say that many of the Indian Buddhist Sanskrit literature must have, might have got uh, destroyed because we all know when Nalanda uh, libraries were destroyed. So uh, it must, this institution has contributed to restoring and preserving many of them. Along with the five major faculty, the institute runs various projects of utmost importance via its research departments like restoration, translation, dictionary, rare Buddhist text research, and center of Tibetan literature. A tradition of Tibetan medical system, which is more than 3,000 years old, is re-established as a renowned department of Soaripa at the institute. It is quite similar to that of Ayurveda in many aspects. The institute is also proud of its Center for Teacher Education, which provides innovative integrated four-year course as well as two years course of Bachelor of Education. The institute has five faculties, 13 teaching departments, five research departments, 13 programs, 20 courses, more than 80 faculty members and around 500 students on the campus. Institute organizes Samvad. This is a very interesting, as you are new, I am also new to this institute, but I was highly impressed with this form of uh, education. It organizes Samvad, an attempt to revive the tradition of debate in ancient India, which was a vibrant philosophical debate tradition in the fields of philosophy and logic, what we call Shastrat. 
His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, provided two of such Samvad gatherings in the institute in which leading scholars of Vedant, Shakya, Nimansa, Vaisheshika, Nyayika, Jainism, Buddhism were invited. Along with this, the institute is renowned across the globe for organizing world-class conferences and seminar time to time. The campus has a vibrant student community, which has its rep representation via student welfare associations, student mass committees, student association of performing arts, voluntary committees and social services, and voluntary com uh, committee for animal care. We have given them all independence to express themselves. Along with faculty members, the students also publish annual magazines and journals. The various renowned alumni of the institute are the brand ambassadors who are working in various international organizations at countries like USA, UK, Australia, almost all the European countries, just to name a few. The university's publication department has a mammoth 330 titles in 12 series along with DHIH, a renowned annual journal. The institute currently has 12 active MOUs with international and national institutions like Phi Colleges Consortium, Emory University, University of Tasmania, Wokang University, etc. The university also takes the responsibility to provide free education to the far off reach students of Himalayan region. During summer vacations, like currently we are not having students, so some of them have gone there only. During summer vacation, our students along with the faculty members take classes of philosophy and Tibetan language and culture in various Himalayan region. The students here run summer schools in Nepal also. Considering the social responsibility of the institute via its students distribute various objects and necessity and stationery to the nearby schools. The institute was proved as a beacon of solace during COVID-19 pandemic. The food and the ration, su ration supply to the local villages, the distribution of the institute has taken a responsibility by adopting two nearby villages. Our student, all, students always participate in Ganga cleaning drive. So anything that is needed in Varanasi, our students are there. Recognizing its worth, the institute has won various accolades, but just to name a few, in 2018, the government of India honored the institute with, with Vaishakha Prasasti for its contribution in preservation and dissemination of philosophy, culture, and art of India. In 2009, two of the scholars of institute were awarded Padmashri for their contribution to education and literature. The institute is the first and the only one um, in the four BTIs to gain the most acclaimed NAC A grading in October 2020-22. So I take all pride to welcome you all to this institution. And I always have a feeling that anybody who comes on this land takes back a great message. And I am uh, proud of our Honorable Vice Chancellor who has given us a leadership. And I'll just take two lines to explain this. The moment we got uh, a call from um, Divya um, Lehri ji and uh, Vice Chancellor sir drafted the design of the entire program so well. The two, two our program should be a message take home for all the people who are bringing pride to their own countries as defense personnel. So thank you and welcome all. Now on last but not least, I would like to call Brigadier KDS Chala for vote of thanks on behalf of Armed Force Delegation. Professor Brigadier KDS Chala. Good evening, Namaste and Jahin. First and foremost, uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Wangchuk Dorjeji, Registrar Ms. Sunita Chandraji, respected members of the faculty and students of the Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies at Varanasi, attending members. It's a singular honor for me to stand here on this elite institution which has carried out, rather conceived, to protect, to revive, and to propagate a tradition and a culture which were getting diminished or distorted. In the last more than 50 decades, uh, five decades or so, this institution has not only 
preserved or protected the Tibetan culture, but also propagated to a large cross-section of the society. The alumni of this institute are there across the world holding a very prestigious positions. In the era when one of the country is trying to suppress and eliminate, eliminate or corrupt this language and culture, it is this the CISTS has lived up to the more than the expectations of preserving, reviving and propagating the Tibetan culture. Now a word about ourselves. यहाँ पर बैठे तभी सभी महोदय मैं ब्रिगेडियर एस के सिंह मेरे साथ में ब्रिगेडियर के डी एस झाला और हमारे साथ विभिन्न देशों के तकरीबन 16 ऑफिसर्स और इंडियन आर्म्ड फोर्सेस के जो कि आर्मी नेवी और एयर फोर्स के 17 ऑफिसर्स आज आपके सामने आए हुए हैं हम पिछले तकरीबन दो हफ्ते से देश के कुछ हिस्सों में जाकर अपने देश के तौर तरीके हमारी संस्कृति हमारा कल्चर के साथ साथ हमारी डिफेंस फोर्सेस की कैपेसिटी और कैपेबिलिटी को अपने जो ऑफिसर्स बाहर से आए हुए हैं उनको दिखाना है यहाँ वाराणसी आने के पहले हम लोग लेह में थे जहां पर हमने आर्मी के साथ साथ जो बुद्धिस्ट कल्चर है उसको भी देखा है ऐसा पहली बार हुआ है कि ऐसा ग्रुप आर्मी का ग्रुप वाराणसी में आकर के सी से इंटरेक्शन कर रहा है पिछले कुछ सालों से जो प्रगति हुई है जो सी का नाम ऊपर आया है उसने हमारा ध्यान आकर्षित किया और इसलिए हमारे आइटनरी में सी का भी नाम आया और उससे भी बड़ी बात यह है हमारी सिर्फ एक रिक्वेस्ट के ऊपर आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू वाइस चांसलर जी दैट ही हैज़ नॉट ओनली एक्सेप्टेड बट रादर ही हैज़ मोर देन वेलकम डज विथ ओपन आर्म्स and i am very grateful and thankful to him so ladies and gentlemen officers from missiles to computer and finally to the rich cultural heritage and tradition you have got a flavor of all may i now request you to please get up and give a standing ovation to the cstis faculty and the members <laughs> may I also request that we give to uh, vice chancellor sir to please accept a small token from the army war college like your institution the army war college is the only college which is there exist in india which is training the leaders and our staff officers to fight and not only fight but win the present and the future wars now uh, i request this august gathering to proceed toward the shanti rakshita library after national anthem so let's uh, stand up on its own place and have a national anthem janagad man adinayak jaya he bharat bhagya vidhata punjab sindh gujarat maratha dravid utkal banga bindh himachal
after visit to the library we are uh, uh, arranged for a uh, little light refreshment uh, in the uh, behind, uh, in the front of the lawn of the library thank you